productivity. Today, I'm going to share some ideas and hopefully some tips on getting shit done. These are productivity tips from the trenches of being a business owner, a parent, a partner, a dog owner, all the things. Because quite often, we are people who have to do all the things. So just to set some context for you, I have two kids three and just turned seven. I've been a business owner since 2010, but I've only had kids for the last few years of that. And obviously I moved from Australia to California and I've had to adjust (laughs) with a 10 week old baby. um, I've had to adjust how much I can get done to how much time I have. I have had to learn really hard lessons about how to prioritize and how to organize because when I was in Australia and I just started my own copywriting business, Copyright Matters, I had all the time in the world. And I packed each day with a lot, a lot of things. So I went from used to being bum in chair from 830 to 5.30 to just emulating that kind of day in my home office. Now, I didn't necessarily put in all those hours, but what I found after a few years is that I was working a lot. I was really busy, but I didn't necessarily, I wasn't necessarily achieving my financial goals or my business goals. And having a kid forced me to, as I said, prioritize what it was that I spent my time on. Because if anyone here is watching who has small kids, you'll know that as you don't have three hours to put the headphones on and sink into a flow. More often than not, like I do, I have to work in small batches of time. So I have to think about what needs to get done and what I can realistically get done. And so if you're watching this live, say g'day, let me know you're there. If you're watching this on the replay, let me know that too. Uh, Hashtag replay. Um, Kaz says new member. Hi Kaz, straight into it. I love it. So today I'm talking about kind of juggling all the things. So just to give you a recap with two kids, you know, one's obviously not at school and one's only just started school. (laughs) Distance learning. Yay. Um, I have a podcast, Hot Copy Podcast. I have two courses, the Copywriting Masterclass for Copywriters and Everyday Copy for Business Owners. I have a membership confident copywriting. Um, I run the Hot Copy Mastermind with Kate Toon. So I do the podcast with Kate Toon and we're just wrapping up a mastermind. Um, I started this group as well for the love of copywriting where I hope to serve you on your copywriting journey, whether you're a copywriter or a business owner who writes their own copy or someone else entirely. Um, And then I have regular content marketing. Now, I'm not telling you all of that to be like, uh, uh, look at me, I'm doing all the things because it is a mad scramble. And I think this year I have tapped into the boundaries, the limits of what I can possibly do. But, you know, doing all those things, I have to schedule my work really smartly so that I'm spending time on the things that move my business forward. I have to be really clear about what my priorities are on any given day. And I just cannot faff. Now I am a chronic faffer. My husband gets so cross at me because leaving the house is a thing because I'm just like, that's the moment when I'll just quickly decide to, um, polish my shoes or, you know, regrab the bathroom or like, I'm just, I love a good faff. And that's what I love on the weekend, just faffing around, but to do the podcast and the courses and the membership and the marketing and serve everyone in the way that I want to serve you all and help everyone. I have to be really efficient. And whenever I share these tips, I see people go, that's amazing. But you know what? It's not rocket science because when, when you have time constraints, you are forced to be awesome fast. And that's really what this is all about. So the first tip I want 
actually, I'm going to ask you a question first. Let me know in the comments, on a scale of one to five, how productive you think you are. One being, I'm not very productive, but I'd like to get better. And five being, I rock it, I'm super productive and I am on it all the time. Let me know in the comments. I've got Jennifer here, hello. And thank you, Jennifer, love the hair. Um, so yeah, let me know. One, not very productive at all. Five, absolutely smashing it. Let me know how you rate your productivity. And I'm gonna start with my first tip, and that is the Pomodoro technique while your numbers are coming through. Now, this is a Pomodoro. The Pomodoro technique is something that I rule my working life around. It's something that I learned, I heard about in 2009, I think. I'm seeing all these things, people coming through with their numbers. Great, I'm gonna loop back to that. I heard about it in 2009 and I remember going to the Pomodoro Technique. It's a, a trademarked thing that you should go and check out the website. I actually took a printed out ebook about what the Pomodoro Technique was on a holiday to Thailand. I had just started my business and I was so excited. And since then I haven't always implemented it very well, but in the last few years with kids and doing all the things, it rules my life now. The too long didn't read about the Pomodoro technique is that you break up your time into 25 minute focus sessions. In 25 minutes, you only focus on one thing and then you have a five minute break. Then you work for another 25 minutes and take a five minute break. That's the heart of it. But the key to the Pomodoro technique is actually mapping out your work before you begin. So what you do is you sit down and you go, these are the things that I want to get done today. This is how many Pomodoros I'm going to assign to this task. And then as you complete each Pomodoro, you check it off. That's it. Now, what I do, and this is what you have to do to really make the Pomodoro work, is you have to know how much time you have available. So on any given day, I might have two or three hours because second kids at daycare and first kids finish school, or I might have five hours or I might have 30 minutes. So you have to be really clear about how much time you have on any given day. Now, if you don't have um, responsibilities that eat into your time and you've got all day, oh, that sounds like heaven. But for many of us, if you have got kids, your days might look a bit like mine. A couple of hours here, a couple of hours there, no time there, a big day there, stuff like that. And so what you do is you start with how much time you have available and then you look at your priorities. What can I get done in two hours, three hours, five hours, 30 minutes? And so then you're not trying to do all the things on your list. You're trying to prioritize what has to get done and what you can get done in that time. So that is how I use the Pomodoro technique coupled with my list of priorities because it forces you, if you follow it to the letter, it forces you to choose what you're going to get done, what you can get done within that time frame. And when you do that, you're not left with a list of things that would actually have taken you three weeks at the end of the day. Because when you do that, I used to put everything that I had possibly had to do in one long list. And then what I didn't get done, I just shunted it over to the next day. And what didn't get done the next day, I just shunted it over to the next day. So at the end of every day, I felt like a big bag of poo because I hadn't got the things done on the list. But the things on the list was three weeks worth of work. Now, what I do is I have four, maybe five things. And I have a very clear sense of how much time I'm going to ded dedicate to each task. And that time has to equal up to the available time I have in any given day. So I'm just going to check the comments. Lots of people saying, oh, Brooke McCarthy, four, of course you are four, uh, you're legend, but uh, twos, threes, yes. Oh, Jennifer says, how have I not looked into this method before? It's exactly what I need. It will change your life, Jennifer. Kaz said, yes, it's the kids thing. Time is disrupted. And when we've got kids and interruptions, we just, we have to factor that in to how we approach our work. Because otherwise we just feel like shit at the end of the day. And I don't know about you, but I begin to start resenting everyone around me for stealing my time. But it's not that. 
We just have to get smarter and more realistic about how much work we shoe shoehorn into the time we have. And when we have uh, the Pomodoro technique tracking um, the, the Pomodoros of time we're going to spend on a task, and we have a time tracking app either on our dashboard or on our phone. I'm not texting my mate, by the way. I'm looking, see, this is mine. Focus Keeper, right? I start it. And so as I'm working, the clock is ticking. Now that might really bother a lot of people, but for me, it reminds me that time is passing and I need to focus. And that is something that really, really helps me. Yeah, Brooke, Pomodoro fan. And it, Brooke says, I especially love it on those days when I've got no focus, exactly because you can do anything for one minute, five minutes, 25 minutes. And when you break a big task down into lots of smaller tasks and you assign those smaller tasks, one Pomodoro, two Pomodoros, three Pomodoros, go, then suddenly you're actually making progress on that huge, enormous goal shifting, life changing project that you've always wanted to get started. And for the things that a lot of the work that I do these days are things I just have to chip away at, whether it's client projects or creating content for my membership or preparing for a coaching call. I just schedule blocks of time in and chip away at the things that need to be done. So if you've got something on your Sunday list and you scheduled one Pomodoro a day, to chip away at that task, you would be done before you even realized it. Helen says, I tried the Pomodoro a while back, but I find it hard to estimate how long tasks will take. I usually underestimate. And that is a real thing. So, you know, there is only something, um, there's a lot of experience that comes with it. But what you might do, Helen, is you might say, right, today I've got these priorities. I'm going to spend three Pomodoros on this task and then I'm going to see where I'm at. And then I'm either going to reassign something else I had on for today so that I can assign more Pomodoros, or I'm going to schedule more work on this project in tomorrow. But the key is tracking how many Pomodoros things are taking or using a time tracking app. And then you're not guessing. How long does it take you to write a web page? You're not guessing. You know, because you've written six before, six websites before. How long did it take you then? But in also when you're managing your time, it's, it's not how long is a piece of string. It's how long am I going to allow myself to spend on this task? Because everything you do will take as long as you allow it to take. So if you're brainstorming, one Pomodoro. If you're researching, one Pomodoro. If you're mapping out your copy, one Pomodoro. If you're writing, two Pomodoros, and then you edit, right? That is how you break up a writing project. And when the clock is ticking, you get good at working a lot, lot faster. All right. So that is um, the first thing I wanted to share, this kind of like Pomodoro technique that forces you forces you. It doesn't force you to do anything, but it gives you a method for mapping out your time. Now, I have this thing, this productivity planner, this thing, productivity planner. It's by a company called Intelligent Change. And the reason I love this, like who doesn't love a planner? Um, but this is a structure that I find really useful. And I don't even know if you can read this, but basically for each day you have one get me on the side. One most important task, two secondary important tasks, three, uh, two more kind of if you can get to it tasks. So you only have five priorities in the day. And then next here is how many Pomodoros I plan it to take, how many Pomodoros I actually spent and how many Pomodoros I ended up, right? So I track it. It's a really simple way to track your time, but, and you could do that on paper. And then at the end of the day, you should have Pomodoros equal the available amount of time, except drift. If you're mapping your time out in this way and you are tracking your time using toggle or something like that. So if you're a copywriter working with clients or any business owner, actually, I do recommend you use a time tracking tool. There's a ton of free ones because then you can get a report. How long am I sending on email? How long am I spending on social media? How long am I doing sweet FA? How long did that client project actually take me? 
when you know how long you're spending on things, then you can make better decisions about how you spend your time, right? It's really, really important to have data in order to help you make decisions about how long things take and how long you're going to spend on a task. So we've talked about the Pomodoro. We've talked about planning out your day, aligning how long you're going to spend on tasks with the available time. And we've talked about tracking time, but I threw in a little, yeah, but in there. And what I'm talking about is drift because without fail, you can't like the Pomodoro technique is so amazing. And when you focus on one thing with no distractions, so if you have to write an email, you write the email, you don't check your emails. You're not on Facebook. You're not checking your phone. You're not choosing your Spotify playlist. You are bum in chair and focusing on that task. You will find you are so damn productive. You need a nap, right? It is tiring and awesome, but tiring, but there comes a point in all this productivity where you, you kind of need to drift. So I always schedule one Pomodoro in my day of drift time. That means things take longer than I expect. I actually get in a flow and I don't want to stop um, or my brain just melts and I need a break. So, you know, when you've got, I've got three hours today or I've got five hours today, schedule four and a half hours of task and give yourself a half hour buffer. You've got three hours, you can work for three hours straight, but be kind to yourself if you're not nailing, you know, every single Pomodoro and learn from it. Factor that in to how you map your day. All right. Uh, Jennifer just says, I just noticed the time and it's late. Catch you on the replay. No worries, Jennifer. So if you are watching the replay, let me know. Hashtag replay. Um, Anne-Marie says, I use the Forest app. Oh, I used to, used to use this one all the time, which allows you to choose the amount of time similar to the Pomodoro method because 25 minutes isn't right for everyone. Someone is like, no, 55 minutes is my golden time, right? Figure out what time for you. But what the Forest app, and I think... Yeah, this is it. You, um, it grows a tree in that time. So that instead of a ticking clock, this little thing is like popping out little leaves and it's just, you know, it's a lovely little visual to help you track your time. All right. So we've talked about the Pomodoro. We talked about mapping. We've talked about tracking your time and we've talked about drift. The last one I want to talk about is turning off distractions. And this is, we all have it, right? Mm, them, you know, and also just general procrastination. Oh, I got to write this thing. Maybe I need a snack. Maybe I need a drink. I do need to do that washing. Um, you know, procrastinate cleaning. That's my classic. So if you know that you are distracted by certain triggers when you need to get work done, you have to adult your way through this and remove them. Sometimes, even though I like my TikTok, TikTok on my phone, I know that as soon as I have little ping noises, it distracts me. So sometimes if I'm really hardcore about it, phone goes in another room. I also have no notifications, right? Because ping, there's an email. Ping, there's a social media post. Ping, little notification in there. I have no sounds, no notifications. Because even just noticing a notification is distraction and it takes you out of the zone and out of the focus space. So if you're working and you're finding yourself not being able to focus, not being as productive as you want to be, pay attention to how you work, pay attention to your space and start writing down and making notes in the moments you get distracted. So my phone's next to me, right? And I just saw a little thing pop up. And so part of my brain's like, check it, check what it is. But no, that is pulling me away from this moment here with you. So pay attention to the things that distract you and set yourself up for success. And if that means changing your environment in some way, turning notifications off, turning sounds off, moving the phone into another room, whatever, you know, maybe it's earphones. I love my noise cancelling earphones. But set up your environment and set up your mental space to give you the best, best chance of success. Because multitasking isn't doing lots of things well. It's doing lots of things really badly. So let me know your favorite tip so far. Um, 
Brooks uses the forest app too. Brooks says, if I can't focus, I do shorter Pomodoros. If I can focus, I do longer ones, right? And so I love that. This is just, there's some days, some days you just ain't feeling it. And you've got to be able to adjust your working routine um, because it's all very well and good saying, look, I'm not feeling it. I'm going to go and watch Netflix. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to go for a run or a swim or, you know, whatever. And that can give that might be the brain break you need, but sometimes you just need to put your bum in the chair and get started. And the little, little focus zone can give you enough of a quick win to get you into some kind of flow and keep you going. That's how you get stuff done, right? Sometimes you need a break, but sometimes you just need to kind of adult your way through it. So let me know. Um, and Marie, I'm just laughing that you feel really guilty when the tree dies. <laughs> so, you know, when it comes to distractions as well, there are apps that say, no, you're not allowed on Facebook, ma'am. You have work to do. Um, you know, so look for writing distraction-free apps if that's what you need to do. There are plenty of tools and tech to support you. Don't feel like just because you, you're having difficulty ignoring your phone that you're a hopeless failure. Get help, which leaves me to my last point. Get help. I mean, one of the things that I have going all the time is social media but I'm not scheduling those posts, right? So my virtual assistant is a social media whiz and she created an Uber spreadsheet of, I have all my blog posts in there and each blog post has a Facebook post, a LinkedIn post and a Twitter post and often multiple versions of the same one with graphics. And then there are testimonials and memes and reviews. And then I have um, posts that lead up to launches and posts that wrap up launches, but I don't remember those. I don't have to make those up each time. I'm not trying to write those on the fly, all scheduled for me. And what it means is that I can be present with my marketing without actually having to be present. And that's not all a VA does. If you find yourself doing things that you do not enjoy, if you find yourself doing repetitive admin tasks that are not the best use of your time and not the most profitable use of your time, then get help. And a lot of people have this idea. Let me know in the comments if, if this is you. I can't afford a VA yet. I'm not successful enough for a VA yet. I'll get a VA when, insert whatever logistic, you know, that you're using as a measure of success that you can get, you're allowed to get help. No, VAs, bookkeepers, graphic designers, these are all people that can support your business and your work, get them before you think you need to, because doing what is your zone of genius, whether it's writing copy or whatever it is you do in your business, that is the most profitable use of your time. And if you're mucking around making camera graphics, that's fine if you enjoy it, but you have to ask yourself, is this the most profitable use of my time? Scheduling Facebook posts, right? Is this the most profitable use of my time? And so my last tip for you is get help. You don't need to build a massive team, but think about the things that you don't like doing or that aren't the best use of your time, the most profitable use of your time and get someone to help you do them. And if you're wondering how you find these people, you put a note out to your network. Hey, I'm looking for a great VA who can help me with this and this and this. Do you know anyone faster than a Google search? All right. So they are the tips that I wanted to share with you. They, this is how I get all my work done. I plan out my day and I usually do it the day before, right? I spend a little bit of time on Sunday mapping out Monday. And at the end of each day, I map out the following day, right? Because then I don't have to think, what do I, what do, I do now? My boss left me a list and all I need to worry about is doing the goddamn list. I map out my day. I map it out in Pomodoros. I use a timer to track my time. I am keenly aware of distractions and I try and get rid of them as much as possible. And I have help, right? I'm not trying to do it all on my own because what it means is instead of scheduling social media posts, I'm creating a resource for confident copywriting or I'm making an update to my copywriting masterclass. That's the best use of your time. Well, probably not your time. It's probably the best use of my time. You'll have your own things that are the best use of your time. So I want to know in the comments, 
one thing that you're going to do to implement some of these productivity structures into your day. And if you do nothing else, start tracking your time, get a free tracker, toggle, free time, time and I, yeah, there's loads of them. And if you track everything you do, I bet you will be surprised at what you're spending your time on. One of the um, biggest surprises I had was realizing just how long I was spending on social media. It was very early in my business and I, I was busy all the time. Like I said, I was working all the hours. I was busy all the time, but I wasn't wasn't bringing in a lot of money and I couldn't figure out why when I was working really long days and when I started tracking my time I realized I was spending a lot of time in my inbox and I was spending a lot of time looking around on Facebook and social media but I was thinking well it's it's marketing it's social media it's helping me grow my business but there is a point of fewer returns where you can spend more time on something and you're not getting any more benefit. So you have to figure out the sweet spot of when you're investing time for a profitable return and when you're just wasting time. So if you're spending a lot of time working, but you're not, and you're thinking, I'm busy all the time, I got the clients, I'm doing all the work. So where is all the money or I'm just never done? Then look at how you spend your time. It'll be a real game changer. Kaz says, I'm going to download a tracker. Yes. But you know what, Kaz? Get a free tracker for your Chrome or just use a, a timer. I like fun gadgets and apps and things like that, but it doesn't have to be high tech, right? It's just all about getting a feel for where and how you're spending your time and asking yourself, and maybe you stick a post-it note on your computer. Is this the most profitable use of your time? All right. So Sonia has just tuned in and I'm about done. So I want to thank you everyone for sharing a little bit of time with me. The replay will live here forever. So catch up on these tips and I would love to know as you go forward, as I said, that one thing that you're going to implement to change the way you work. Let's try and all hold each other accountable, hey? All right. So have an awesome day and uh, I'll see you around. Um, oh, no, that's it. My name is Belinda Weaver. I thought I should probably introduce myself right at the end. My name is Belinda Weaver. My business is Copyright Matters and I'm here to help you be more awesome. Okay, cool. See you, everyone. <laughs>